Hello, I'm Lindsay Wyrick, and today we're going to paint this beautiful seaside painting using Derwent Graffitin pencils. I like to use Derwent Graffitin pencils anytime I am painting a coastal seascape or any sort of New England type scene or really any northern environment because it's got that kind of muted, misty, desaturated palette. This is tinted graphite that's water soluble. So you've got the um, you've got the attributes of drawing with a pencil, the attributes of drawing with a color pencil, and also the ability to turn it into watercolor. I'm working with a really light touch here, putting some color into the sky and into the water. I've taped my paper down on all four sides and as you can see I already drew my scene on there so um, that's what I did for preparation. When I'm going in to draw the rocks I like to really uh, put some strong lines, almost abstract lines in between the nooks and crannies and the cracks of the different rocks and the splits between the rocks. I feel like it really gives it that nice atmosphere. I'm using some warm brownish color over the rocks and I'll also be adding in some burgundy tones. That color is called port and it's just a gorgeous um, kind of deep red. Now I know these colors don't look extremely vibrant right now but that happens when you add water. So if you want an even more desaturated palette you'll want to use these dry but once you add water to them you really make the, the color come to life that's in those graphite pencils. I want to also put that port color, which is my brightest red from the series here, into the um, lighthouse keeper's house roof, the little shed there, and any place else I see a spark of that color. And the reason I want to do that is because we're using a lot of green here. This color is called ivy. It's near the um, near the rocks, and it's near those red sheds. So. That green is going to look especially lush when you have little pops of red around it. The um, rocks are going to be very neutralized next to that so that's why I wanted more color in the rocks to really bring out the shape and the uh, design of them. I love to draw rocks. I think it's one of my favorite subjects especially my favorite landscape subject and you can see that I don't have to be too particular when I'm putting this color down if I'm going to be liquefying it so I can just kind of dance around here add a little stab of green here and there around the rocks. I can be really um, impressionistic with it, which I love because um, it allows you to be spontaneous and it allows you to play. And since we're doing so many layers here, you don't have to worry about being perfect at any time. You're going to have chances to sharpen things up and you're gonna have chances to adjust colors. So don't worry about that. Now I scribbled some of the dark indigo on my masking tape. One of my favorite things about having the masking tape is I've got a disposable palette on all sides of my painting. And I'm using that to pick up some color to intensify the color I already put in the sky. I tend to go a little light when I am first coloring in with the graphitin pencils. And by scribbling on the masking tape and picking it up with my brush, it just gives me more intensity. Now I turn the brush on its side to use the chisel edge to paint the water. And this is giving me that choppy um, movement in the water that I want. You can see the undertones of the aubergine kind of purpley tone that I have next to the rocks, which I think is really going to make them pop. And then look at how beautiful that green is once we add some water to it. Now I'm using the Derwent water brush. It comes in a set of four and there's various size tips for what you want to paint. So um, I try to match my brush with the size of what I'm painting. To do the sky, I'm going to use the biggest brush I have. To do this little roof, I'm going to use the smallest brush I have. It's a good rule of thumb to use the largest brush you can in a situation because that's going to make you a better painter and it's going to help you with your brush control. So keep that in mind whenever you're painting, whether you're using a water brush or a traditional brush. Now I'm scribbling again some of the color on my masking tape. That's that IV that I used for the grassy area. And I'm picking it up with my smallest water brush and I'm going to use that to paint in the little slivers of green I can see between the slats in this fence here out front. So that's a wonderful uh, way to use this. If I went in with a pencil and drew in all those details and then had to go in with a brush and liquefy them to get the vibrancy up, I might end up wiping away all the white that I saved out. So it's just a great way to reserve that. And then I did scribble out some gray onto the sides and I'm using that to shadow any of my white buildings there so they don't look so stark. Even white objects generally are not bright white. The only thing you're going to find bright white in your painting is usually your highlights, like the light bouncing off reflective surfaces. So you want to make sure you get that in there. Otherwise, you're not going to have the complexity and depth that you will want in your scene. I love the masking tape 
paint palette technique. And that's what I'm going to call it. I don't know anybody else that does it. Maybe I made it up. Wouldn't that be cool? Um, but I just love it for being able to paint with these a little bit more like a palette. Now they do make graphitin pan paints that you can, that are wonderful, um, that you can also use if you have them. But if you don't, this is a great way to make those pencils act like the pan paints. Now, one technique that um, I also like, and I only do this if I really want lines to show up, and you can see those really dark black lines I have in the rocks. If you work over wet paper with your graphitin pencils, you'll get a darker line. So keep that in mind anytime you want some really rugged dark lines. Um, but if you want to be able to blend them out and smooth and be able to liquefy all the pigment, you want to work on dry paper. Now I use my masking tape palette again and got out some black and dark indigo and now I'm putting more strong ripples in the water. So I've got black ones up next to the rock um, where you're kind of seeing through the rock and you're seeing that uh, dark wet rock underneath and then I've got more brighter blue towards the bottom of the picture. Now here, um, I went in with a sharp midnight black graphitin pencils to do some detail up here but you know I kind of wish that I weighted and did those with a fine liner because I ended up wanting to use fine liners on this when I was done anyway. So I'm just going to mention that to you um, in case you think you're going to bring in fine liners at the end, which I'll show you how to do in this tutorial. Um, I just wasn't sure I was going to do that at this point and um, I kind of like to work intuitively sometimes. Now I noticed, speaking of intuitively, I noticed I had a big blossom in the upper uh, left hand corner of my painting so I needed to fix that. So I went in with another layer of um, the uh, pencil over the sky and also made up a little on my palette and just brushed water over it with my water brush and I was able to cover up that blossom and, and actually made my sky a little darker at the top and I like that. A lot of times when you're outside and you look out up upon the landscape you'll notice that the sky is darker at the top and it gets lighter as it gets closer to the horizon so um, it just helps you give depth and it looks a little bit more natural anyway. So I've let my paper dry thoroughly. You really don't want to skip this step. Dry it with a hair dryer if you're impatient, because if you're going to use fine liners on your work, your paper has to be bone dry or you will damage them. These Derwent line makers have a variety of different nib sizes, and I'm using um, a variety of them in this piece. I'm using the 0 0.05 for my smallest uh, little details. Then I'm using a... Um, uh, I think it's like a 0.1 and a 0.5. I don't think I went much larger than that. I might have went in with like an 8 around the, um, or 0.8 around the windows, but uh, I just basically matched the size to the lines I'm trying to achieve. I used a thicker one in the rocks as well. Now, a quick tip on the fine liners or the line makers is that, and this will work in, with whatever brand you have, if you have a thicker pen than what you want, if you use it at an angle, you will get a thinner line. And I find that very useful, especially on watercolor paper where you've got a little texture to it and I don't want to you know press too firmly because I don't want to damage my pen that's something you also have to think about when you're using watercolor paper don't use anything too rough or it is kind of hard on your uh, line makers or any other fine tip pen but man look at that detail though we can get on the rocks I absolutely love it now the technique I'm using here on the rocks is kind of like a blind contour you can actually draw all of these rocks uh, without lifting your um, your picture if you have a hard time doing rocks you could actually do a blind contour, look at a reference photo of rocks and draw without looking at your paper. That's if you really have a hard time. Or just do a continuous line drawing with the um, with the rocks by looking at your paper and just trying to kind of go from one crack and division to the next. And it's really fun and I think it just gives you such a cool look. You can even put some ripples in the water with your fine liner. I think it's a great way to get some of those crisp details. And um, I think it really does bring out a uh, sharpness to the picture that otherwise I felt was lacking in my previous painting. And I'll, that's why I like to fine line after because sometimes I don't want it after I see it all done, but other times I think, yeah, I really would like a little sharpness. Now I am going in and kind of boosting some of my colors. I'm using some more greens. I'm using some um, blues. I'm just trying to basically add a little bit of more life in the grass because the grass is really the only organic thing here. The rocks are inorganic, the building's inorganic, so your, your grass is your only living thing. So you want it to kind of glow and um, and be alive. And I'm boosting the color and the shadows in my rocks as well because like I said, 
I love to paint rocks, so adding a little bit of zhuzhing here and there just makes me happy. And uh, and also, if we can kind of warm them up a little bit and bring them closer to the viewer, it's going to add a little depth to our scene. And this is not a terribly de deep scene because most everything is in a fairly close plane. The, the lighthouse is fairly close to the shore, so you don't have like a wide expanse with mountains and things like that. You're working in a very kind of small depth of field. So anything you can do to add a little more interest, add a little more depth is going to be very useful here. And anytime I did put a little more red in there, I want to liquefy that to boost that color. Like I said, this is a more muted red than um, your typical palette of colors. So you want to kind of maybe boost some of those brighter areas so that you do get that still that that coastal feel but you still get those pops of colors of like say red paint or red metal roof or, or whatever and there you have it I'm taking the tape off here to reveal the beautiful white border now you could even draw an outline around the painting if you wanted to but that's up to you and uh, that just about does it I hope you try some drawing or painting outside with your pencils water soluble graphite is so nice for that and this set of 12 graphite pencils by Derwent has a beautiful variety of colors without too much to carry and get overwhelmed by. So there you have it. I want to thank you so much for watching today. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. And until next time, happy crafting.